Minbo. Thank you so much for taking our time to interview with us. For the viewers, may we request you to please share your journey, your story in your own words. Yeah, sure, no problem. So like the journey, I think for me, I'm a bad example on the GMAT preparation part. However, for the application aspect, I think uh, I could be a good example. So like I only get GMAT score at the 640. I know this is not a great score to get admits in the top business school. However, I, you know, I got the admission successfully from the both two schools I applied. So during this whole journey, I think that uh, I really <laughs> worked hard. So I also took a one week uh, off to answer all those questions we shared by the expert global. So you guys are really a, a great uh, help for me during this journey because even though I get a GMAT score maybe just above 700, so that is uh, like top 10 percent top 10 percent of the students in the world however if you do not know that who you are and then what do you want to do in future i think you still will not be able to succeed in your application however like with the expert global so they help us to think how to retrospect yourself and then to think your path and then why they will give you a bunch of questions. So it also take a lot of time to think. After answering those questions, you will gain confidence because they were something that you actually have done it before. However, because you have never dig into it. So you never get a chance to realize that's how amazing things you have achieved so far. So after you gain the confidence, so this is the key points you will get. And then when you have your interview, during the interview, so the two key things they are looking at from the applicant, the first one that's uh, you're good enough. So only when you are confident about what you have done, then you will have that confidence in your in your face. The second one is that you are deeply interested in your target school. So this is the one thing that uh, I have uh, done through the conversations with the alum line. So I actively <laughs> look for the alum lines in the LinkedIn and then I get uh, the information I wanted from the schools. So that's why I think that I got uh, both uh, successful admissions. Awesome. That's great. So with the benefit of hindsight, what are a few mistakes you believe you might have committed in this process? The mistakes? Mm -hmm. Okay. So for the GMAT, I really, you know, underestimate the difficulty level of mm -hmm. GMAT for me because I'm not a native speaker. I, in my past uh, experience, I also never have an education in English material. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, quite challenging for me to prepare for the GMAT because it requires you to answer questions like first you need to comprehend the question and then answer the question in two minutes accurately yes so for me you know i only know like the basic uh conversational uh english so at the beginning i spent a lot of time in the vocabulary part however i think that i also committed a mistake there because i only focus on the vocabulary so i would advise the future applicants you know to start your applications on the verbal parts like all the aspects because the verbal have three parts so you prepare all of them together not only just focus on the vocabulary so that is the first one and then second that's uh, do get your GMAT score early because I initial plan is to apply three to four schools however because I only get my GMAT score at a very late stage so I only able to you know to apply two schools and then in the round three so you know everyone knows that uh, for the round three so the seats is much much less compared to the first round and the second round and then even though if you want to apply the scholarship, even though you are, your profile is very competitive, you won't be able to get it. Right. So I would say that uh, on the GMAT parts, do start your GMAT preparation early. Yes. Even though you want to, you only want to do your MBA maybe just after two or three years. So, but uh, the GMAT score, the validity of it is like five years. So just uh, get it started early. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is true. Uh, starting early, I think, really, really helps and it goes a long way. So what were the main <laughs> GMAT resources that you used during your preparation? In the end, I found out that uh, the OG, the official material should be the you know, mystic too. Like, even though I know that Manhattan, the questions are very difficult, very unique, it may help us to, you know, to, to get familiar with the new questions coming out of from the OG. But that's just the assumption only. 
So it's not justified. It. So you have to go back to with the, the original resource release vendor. And then after that, uh, for the GMAT operation, so you also need to uh, take mock tests. Yeah. So yeah, so that's this is where I think that you need to go to those websites like GMAT Lab or even for us, because we are Chinese, so we also have a plenty uh, Chinese platform for us to practice. So yeah, get a mock test uh, website. Mm -hmm. So according to you, what is the ideal frequency of mock tests that the aspirants must take? I think once in a week at least. So this is the normal frequency before your uh, rare exam. If your rare exam is just happened like one month later, then you should double the frequency because the GMAT exam is an exam to you know to test that's how effectively you can manage your time right so during the GMAT exam so even though you could answer all those questions correctly in the end but if you did not manage the time properly you still you know won't get a good score so taking mock test is very important yeah. so you should uh, you know double the frequency if your exam just like one month away absolutely so how was your experience of applying to these schools and what are a few things you believe you did correctly in successfully achieving the admit the application journey at the beginning i think there are a few phases for me during this journey so at the beginning, I was a little bit scared. I was not confident about the business school. And uh, what I have done is, like I said, I talked to the alumni. And then I know that uh, what type of people are my opponents. So after knowing my opponents, and then I know that actually I also stay a good choice. Oh, and yeah. then the second thing that's uh, really, you know, hire a professional consultant. So they will help you to, you know, to think in the direct way, help you to save the time. Right. The third one like also talk to the admission outreach team. So these are a group of people that you should actually, you know, especially before the interview, they actually will tell you what kind of questions the schools will ask you during the interview. Mm -hmm. And then they also will tell you more about the, about the program and then about the, you know, uh, success stories about, about their students. So, mm -hmm. and then after I have uh, done all the three things that I gain more confidence. And then one more thing that I, I gain a confidence while well, I watching the videos from the SML Global. Earlier, I was not confident about my uh, arranging as well because I'm a village girl. So many of my uh, opponents, so mm -hmm. they are multi-talented. However, that's uh, by watching the videos shared by the SML Global, so I'm able to understand actually that is also an advantage I have. That is not a shortcoming I have, that is an advantage. So I think that uh, plays a uh, play a big role in the selection mm -hmm. so all together i think the the key for the success is you know you know yourself well like what is your weapons can use to get mm -hmm. the selection done right that is true it's so important to actually introspect on our own goals and to know ourselves better in this journey yeah know our own goals as also need a, a professional to guide us that what are the qualities that the business school they're looking at right. because if without expert global i have to say that i will not know that my arranging is actually my advantage okay. instead of a disadvantage yeah right. so that's i think uh, <laughs> have helped me because mm -hmm. after that i have uh, in a way i have showcased a little bit during my interview okay. yeah, because during my interview so the admission team only asked me like two three questions mm -hmm. they feel that they were super surprised by me so okay. then they they even asked me a question that uh, we, we we cannot imagine that uh, mm -hmm. how did you you overcome all those adversities and then reach here today so i think that is, yeah. is a great acknowledgement i get from the school before before uh -huh. the selection result okay that's awesome so with what area in the application process did you struggle the most and how did you overcome that challenge struggle most of course like to know yourself I think there are a lot of questions you need to answer. So, however, I still have a full-time job to play. And then I also need to take care of my family because of the family crisis I'm facing right now. Mm -hmm. I got no choice because I want to get admitted and then start my MBA soon. Mm -hmm. So I have taken one week off. However, for the profiling questions, I stay up very late okay so what would you like to say about your learning from managing the application timeline so there's a metric for urgent 
important metric. So you have plenty of things you need to do during your application, but you need to categorize that what are the things that are urgent and important. You should get those down. Yeah, at the same time, uh, of course, that's uh, a professional team. They could help you because they will keep checking on your progress and then send you reminder in a way as an extender force. So keep you on track. So those are the two things that I think that helped me during this journey. Okay, that's really nice. So would you like to share your interview experience with the B-School? Okay, so I only applied to schools. So that is NTU. So the NTU, uh, the admission team are very friendly. I would say that very friendly. And then they also care a lot about your possibility of getting a job successfully after the MBA. So this is one thing that earlier I did not expect that much during a you know selection interview. So that's uh, because after I have done so much introspection about myself, then of course I will know that uh, what kind of possibilities I have after MBA. Uh, I also give them, you know, a, a great answer, I think, because they know that uh, I definitely will be one of their success story. So mm-hmm. they select me in the end. And another interview I took is from the SMU, Singapore Management University. I would say that uh, the questions they asked me, 80% of the questions are not the common questions. I think I have met, uh, I have met an unusual uh, interviewer. So he somehow very interested about my job and then also very interested about my industry. However, himself has a prejudice about my industry and my job. So the challenge for me during the interview is how to let him understand my industry well while I still do not offend him. So the, the thing at the beginning I have done is, you know, to just tell him that say everything, only say that's from your point of view. Don't say that everyone says that. So in a way to let him to get your idea accepted more easily. And then second one, because you really have to know yourself and then you also need to know about your industry. So those are the things that actually the interview also will look at. So you also need to be very familiar about the industry you are at right now and then what kind of problem your industry are facing. Because the business school, uh, they want to test whether you have a business agreement. So those are very important to prepare before the interview. Absolutely. We need to have the knowledge of the field you're working in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what are a few common mistakes that you would advise all the future aspirants to avoid? Three. The first one mm-hmm. so is a general one. Get your GMAT score done early. So even though your plan is like after two or three years later, doesn't matter because the validity is for five years. And then second, during your GMAT preparation, do categorize your mistakes. So at the beginning, I did not categorize mistakes. So I have wasted a lot of time. I realized that actually I, so some of the questions, I keep answering those wrongly. So I repeating the questions. So after you categorize the mistakes, then you will know that's why or well you are weak. Okay. So um, then the third one, that's because for us, like we are still need to do full-time job. So the time is very limited for us. So if financially possible, then go and get a one-on-one coaching because this is a, a way that you will get a chance to chat with your instructors or teachers timely. However, if you go with the group sections, I think that you won't get that chances. So even though at the beginning, maybe people will think that the group session, group classes will be cheaper. It's more uh, cost-effective, but I have experienced both group session <laughs> coaching and then the one-on-one coaching session. I I have realized actually both ways that so spend equally, similarly. So, uh, so that's why I will say that if you still need to play your full-time job, go and then get a one-on-one coaching session mm-hmm. because that is more uh, customized learning for yourself. And then the fourth one, I think, start your application early. So don't think that, you know, answering profiling questions in maybe just two, three days work. Mm -hmm. I've done it for like 10 days. So don't think it's very easy because you need to do a lot of thinking. And then the answers don't come out very easily. You need to dig very deep. Yes, that is true. So what would be your final message or suggestion to all the viewers watching this video? Be confident about yourself and then if possible, hire a professional consultant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be my final message to the applicant. If they're not financially possible for them to hire a consultant, and then you check the websites of Expert Global because there are plenty of videos for you to understand yourself.
All right. Thank you so much, Minbo, for giving us your time and interviewing with us. So, all the best for your MBA journey. So, wish Expert Global will have a great success ahead uh, as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wish to meet you guys in person in future as well. Sure, definitely. <laughs> yeah, see you guys soon. All right. Yeah, yes. Bye. Okay. Bye. Take care. Mm-hmm.